So this is going to be a answer key video for your uh, review part two of your inheritance practice problems. And all this one is all about your calculations with Punnett squares. And this answer key uh, involves all of your different kinds of problems. So my suggestions would be for you to attempt these questions, uh, try them out, and then compare your answers. And if you have any questions, you can always come back to this video and re revert back to this if you are unclear with any of these questions. So some of these questions are challenging. Some of them are straightforward. So we're going to tackle all of these ones in different combinations so the first one says in cats long hair so long hair is recessive so I'm just gonna say long is recessive so this is supposed to be recessive and uh, to short hair so we know that that is long is recessive short is going to be your dominant so let's establish some Oh, my writing's not very nice on this one. Recessive, let's establish some letters. So we'll just use the lowercase l for recessive and uppercase l for short. And a true breeding homozygous short hair male. So we know that for the male, it's going to be homozygous short hair. And we know that short hair is dominant. So we're going to have two uppercase l's to start. And this is going to be mated with a female whose genotype is a, or phenotype is a long hair female. So we know that it's going to be a long hair which is a recessive so it doesn't even say that it's homozygous but because it's a recessive trait you know it has to be homozygous recessive so that's your genotype so then what would the kittens look like so you set up your pundit square so I'm just gonna set up my males up here with the genotypes to uppercase L's and then my two lowercase L's be here and then my uppercase lowercase uppercase lowercase and you can see that all of these ones are going to be heterozygous so all these ones are going to be heterozygous so it's going to be a hundred percent uppercase which is going to be short hair so this is going to be short hair kittens short hair so that's your first one number two let me scroll down here a little bit let's see if I can do this number two two cats are mated one of the parent cats is long hair so we're going to say that long hair oh that one did record long hair is again recessive and then the litter which results contain two short haired and three long hair kittens so then um, what does the second parent look like so this is kind of a tricky one because you're given some results but you have to figure out what parents what genotype of one of the parent is so you know that one of the parent is going to be a long hair recessive allele. So it doesn't matter if it's male or female, but you know that the phenotype is long hair and you know that it's recessive. So in order for any phenotype of a recessive to occur, it has to be homozygous. So I'm just going to say that my male is a homozygous recessive like this. And then the litter, when you cross the male with this female, somehow you get two short hair so you know that you have two short hair which is going to be a dominant one you don't know if it's homozygous or recessive yet or homozygous or heterozygous yet but you also know that you get three long hair ones so you know that long hair means recessive so in order for this my writing is not very nice in this one so this is supposed to be recessive here we go in order for any recessive to occur you know that the the recessive trait allele must be present so you can pretty much safely say that this female must be a heterozygous one because number one it has to have the uppercase because this uppercase represents dominance and that represents the short hair that's where the litter those kittens got it from and also because you got three long recessive kittens as a result that recessive trait must come from the other parent so then this femur must be a heterozygous one. So if we were to do the Punnett square, this is my female here. So this is my female. If I do my L, L here, so then you can see the, the phenotypes of my litter is 50%, 50-50 or one to one. So then if you look at my calculations or my results, you have three long and two hair. So, I mean, our sample size is pretty small, but that makes sense because it's actually cl very close to 50-50. So that's your question two. So let's move on to question three. 
Question three is another monohybrid cross. So we know that it's going to be involving with one pair of allele. Uh, we have two wavy hair people, one male and one female marry and have eight children. So you know that you're going to have a male and female. And both of these people have wavy phenotypes. So wavy hair phenotypes. So that's that. And they have eight kids. Of these eight, how many would you expect to be curly hair? So we don't know what the genotype is for curly but you know that that's a phenotype and how many wavy hair how many straight hair are there and then if you look at this one assuming that the family follows the expected predicted inheritance pattern um, I think this question is actually missing an information we can tell that this question is a incomplete dominance because we have curly straight and wavy so wavy is sort of like the in-between um, why I'm saying that it's missing some information because we don't really know which one is dominant or recessive so let's just try this one uh, it, we can say that assume that curly is my dominant one so this is gonna be my dominant one dominant and because curly is my dominant, then the lower C here is going to be my recessive. And in some ways, this actually could work because we have an incomplete dominance and something that's in between. So if we were to do the Punnett square, if we have two wavy ones, that means that we have two heterozygous ones. So it doesn't even matter if which one is dominant or recessive. We just know that these wavy ones are in between or incomplete. So we have one that is uppercase, one is that's lowercase, and then also one is uppercase and one is also lowercase. And if you complete this Punnett square, you can have two uppercase C, homozygous dominant, uppercase and lowercase C, uppercase and lowercase C on heterozygous and homozygous recessive. So we know out of this one that 25% of this is going to be uppercase uppercase which is going to be your curly so this is going to be my 25 percent and then we know that over here and over here that's going to be 50 percent that's heterozygous so this is going to be 50 percent wavy and then the last one is going to be two homozygous recessive alleles and that's 25 percent and that's going to be your straight so this question is sort of missing uh, in defining which one is your curly or straight if in fact that straight is supposed to be dominant then we still know that it is 25% still because the other one is still 25% so in, in a way uh, we don't really need to know which one's dominant and recessive because both percentages are exactly the same but if we really need to know the the results then yeah we would have to do a test cross so this is your uh, question number three uh, looking at the incomplete dominance because we have three different patterns where the wavy one is sort of in between curly and straight okay so that's your monohybrid crosses so in our dihybrid cross questions we're going to see that we have two allele pairings so the first question question says that a man with dark dominant curly hair marries a woman so let's just kind of define this um, dark is going to be dominant so let's just use the capital letter D and the second trait allele would be curly and let's uh, from previous example I think we use um, dominance as well so let's just use the capital C this is the male uh, Mary is a woman with light so light is going to be my lowercase d because this is my recessive and straight hair so let's use straight and because this is going to be your recessive one, this is what we're going to have. Mary is a uh, man. Okay, so that now the next part is that their daughter, whatever they made up, their daughter happens to have dark hair. So the, their daughter happens to have dark hair. So it has to have the dominance here. We don't know if it's homozygous or not. But because we do know actually... Um, the the mom the mother of the daughter has light hair we know that has to be a heterozygous so we know that it has to be heterozygous because that lowercase d has to come from the recessive trait from the mother so we know that's the first trait 
but we don't know what kind of hair that she has right now. We just know that she has dark hair, but we don't know if it's curly or straight. So then she marries a, a person, a man, with light hair. So light hair is going to be so it's going to be have light hair. It's going to be recessive. So it's going to be homozygous recessive, right? Because light is recessive. So it has to be homozygous recessive and wavy hair. And we know from previous example that this is an incomplete dominance. We know that it's going to have an uppercase and a lowercase. So that's going to be your wavy hair. So then the question is, draw a punnett square for a daughter's marriage and predict the phenotypic ratio among the offspring of the daughter and her husband. So let's look at this. So going back to your um, the parents of this daughter, we, we couldn't really figure out what kind of texture it is. But if you really think about it, the dad had dominant C or dominant hair uh, genotype while the mother had recessive. So their only offspring or their only genotype from their offspring has to be heterozygous. So this is the genotype for the female. And for the male of the, the husband of their daughter, this is the genotype. So let's create a Punnett square and see what happens. So I'm going to put my male up at the top. And if you remember how to, to figure out this, the law of independent assortment is that you're taking one from each pairing. So first one is going to be the lowercase d. And then I can also pick a uppercase c here. I didn't even arrange them in alphabetical order. Hopefully this, this is okay with you. Then the second combination is that I have I can choose this again, lowercase d, because that's the only one I can choose from this pair. And then from this one I can choose a lowercase c. That's my second combination. And these two are my only combinations that I can get from these four. And for the female, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. So I'm gonna choose one from here. So this is gonna be my upgrade case D. And then I'm going to choose a uppercase C and do the same thing, uppercase D. Now I have a lowercase C. And then now I've got to go to this one because I can choose the lowercase D as well. So choose the lowercase D. But now I choose back the uppercase C. So you can see that I'm just filling in all the different combinations of my alleles. So there's that one. So complete all this stuff. You know that it's going to get pretty messy here because there's a lot of different colors. So if I fill this in, there's that, uppercase, uppercase, lowercase, uppercase, lowercase. Don't forget to underline. There's this. Underline just makes it easier to see. Lowercase d, homozygous recessive. And then I have two lowercase d's and homozygous dominant. Lowercase, lowercase, and uppercase, lowercase. Finally, I have homozygous recessive, heterozygous, and homozygous recessive, and homozygous recessive. Oh, that's not a C. So now once I'm finished this, then I can actually look at the phenotypes and what the phenotypic ratio is. So I can see that these are all my dominant, dominant. This one's dominant, dominant. So this is a dominant, 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 dominant. This is also a dominant, dominant. Um, I think I have three of them. So that's three dominant dominant. So we know that they're dark and curly, right? Those are my two dominant ones. So that's dark and curly. That's my three. I can also have a dominant and recessive. I have one of these ones. So my dominant is dark and recessive for C is straight. So that's that. So I have one of those. I can also have recessive and dominant. So this one is recessive dominant, recessive dominant, and also recessive dominant. So I have three of those. Recessive is going to be my light and curly. I have three of those. And lastly, I have one, which is my recessive recessive, which is my light and straight. So from those Punnett square, then we can figure out that the ratio, phenotypic ratio, ratio is 3131 three, based on these phenotypes. So then what is the chance of their child having her uh, hair, hair just like their father's, light and wavy? So we forgot the incomplete dominance here, but then we can see that looking at the light and wavy, we know that light is homozygous recessive. So right here. And we can see that these ones are the wavy ones. I totally forgot that these ones are incomplete, but 
the chances are it's going to be one in four. So it's going to be one out of um, four or two out of eight to make 25% having the same hair, uh, same texture or same phenotype as the dads. So don't forget that this one is actually an incomplete with the dye hybrid question. Uh, I made a little mistake by just assuming that they're homozygous or heterozygous will be your dominant one but um, that's your your first question it is a, a lot lengthier than your monohybrid question that's for sure so for the second question I, I wanted to save time and did the question and the work before so in this one it says a pure breed homozygous black dominant and a long hair recessive cat is mated to a pure breeding Siamese short hair cat so we have two pure breeding uh, cats and one of their male offspring is mated to one of their female offspring so basically it's sort of somewhat an incest but um, we're looking at the chance of producing a Siamese colored short kitten from all of this so let's just break it down from the parents uh, aspect the parental generation is the P1 and since these are all pure breeding they're all going to be homozygous so we're going to have a homozygous black so which is your dominant one and we're going to have a long hair which is recessive so that's homozygous as well so this is the genotype from the one of the parents and then this is going to be made it to a pure breeding Siamese so we just know that Siamese is going to be a recessive one so it's going to be homozygous recessive and also a homozygous dominant because it has short hair uh, which is a pure breeding as well so when this mates if you set up the Punnett square the only co possibility is that you only have one combination so if this were to be here the only thing I can choose from the B's is uppercase B and the only letter I can choose from the L's is just L likewise with this is lowercase b and uppercase l and if you finish this and look at the the combinations your f1 generation your offspring generation has 100 percent being heterozygous heterozygous the question is not about this though it's about actually your f2 generation is what happens when you take one person from here and made it with another person from this offspring what are the chances of getting siamese colored short hair kitten so that means that you have to have siamese um, homozygous like this and also short which is a either homozygous dominant or heterozygous so if we were to look here let's circle all the ones that would have hetero uh, homozygous recessive so there's this one that's one that's two right here that's three and that's it because this is a homozygous recessive for long hair so you only ha have three out of 16 chances of having it Siamese and short hair I think that's what we want right so Siamese and short hair so this is the answer three out of 16 uh, of having the um, the odds of having that for your offspring so that's your question number two so for question number three is a little bit tricky because now you actually have provided with results and uh, again let's look at the question in garden peas long stems are dominant to short stems so I have written here and also yellow seeds are dominant to green <laughs> green seeds now it says that hundred long and yellow so long and yellow ones are um, are interbred so basically you have long and yellow but the question is is it homozygous dominant as in you have your two uppercase L's or is it heterozygous why do I know that it is heterozygous well in order for me to be very sure of this is that I look at this bit of information of which had one short and green parent and you know that short and green are recessive because you have those recessive parent or that one recessive parent that recessive trait actually gets carried down to your offspring and it makes it a heterozygous and heterozygous so then now once you have that then you have your genotypes of the parent geno parent of the other parent and you can see that this is your heterozygous heterozygous i hybrid cross which you will get a ratio of 9331 as as a result and what that means is that you're going to have out of these 16 squares you're going to have nine of them that's going to be your dominant dominant long and yellow you're going to have three of them which is going to be your long and green your dominant recessive and also you're going to have your recessive and dominant for three and finally one out of 16 you will have short and green so the question is assuming these two genes are unlinked how many 
long green plants which you expect to find. So you know that you have 1,600 uh, plants. And how many plants out of that will be long and green? So long and green will be 3 out of 16. So the math is that you're going to have 3 out of 16 chance of this happening. You're going to multiply this by the total, which is 1,600. So whatever um, answer you get here, you're going to get. So if you cancel this out, so 16 cancels out with this one. So you should get 300 as an answer. So you should, out of 300 plants, or out of 1,600 plants, 300 of them will be your um, long and green. So the next one is what ratio of green, uh, yellow to green seed color would you expect from this? So you look at the yellow to, to green. Um, this is yellow to green. So you can see that there's going to be 9 plus 3 is going to be 12. This is going to be 12 to ratio of 4 because these ones are green, right? So 3 plus 1 is 4. So that's going to be your ratio. So whatever um, the ratio is, it's basically going to be, oh, since this is out of 1600, this is easier because it would be 1200 to 400. And it's basically really just 3 to um, 1 ratio because if you just reduce this, it will be 3 to 1 ratio. And what would you expect the overall phenotypic? A ratio among the 1600 offspring to be taking both traits color in, into uh, consideration so then you just have to look at this and this is your phenotypic ratio because um, this is the ratio from your Punnett square and you're looking at from uh, with the 1600 offspring that's all so that's your third question it looks very wordy but try to break it down a little bit at a time and you're gonna see that um, remember what you calculate from your punish square that's your probability so that's your percentage that you can get and if you're given the full number you can actually multiply into that to get your um, the actual number um, of your offspring so that's your question three